Hey guys, this is John Hang, and if you've been following my videos recently, you'll know that I just actually recently bought a house. In the next month, I'll be closing on that house, and in the meantime, I've got to lock in my interest rate and loan terms. And one of the questions I've been getting is whether or not I'm going to be doing a 15-year or a 30-year mortgage. And in this video, I wanted to explain exactly why I'm deciding to go with a 30-year mortgage. A lot of people might be concerned that in the difference between a 15 and a 30 year mortgage, I might end up spending about $100,000 more in interest, but in this video I wanted to explain why it makes more sense for me. So let's get into the video. So what are some of the reasons why people choose a 15 year mortgage over a 30 year mortgage? Generally 15 year mortgages have lower interest rates and because of that, at the end of everything, you'll have paid significantly less in interest and for the house in general. So why would anyone do a 30 year mortgage? where generally interest rates are much higher and you're paying off a house for twice as long. In this video, I wanted to explain that, so let's bring this to the computer and I can show you some numbers. All right, so let's chalk it up this way. I have a friend named Chris. He's deciding to do a 15-year loan term. And then I have me. I'm deciding to do a 30-year loan term. Considering all things are equal, the house is 250000 the down payment is 50000 so we are both borrowing the same amount of money. But our interest rates and our loan terms are different. So Chris has an interest rate of 3.17, whereas I have an interest rate of 3.77. And I got these loan terms off of bankrate.com. These are the averages. So you can see here, Chris ends up paying about $1,400 a month compared to my 929. But at the end of 15 years, he'll have paid off his house and only paid $51,000 in interest. Whereas I would have been spending 30 years paying off my house, and I would have ended up paying 134000 in interest. So at a glance like this, it makes more sense to do a 15-year mortgage. But let me move on to the next sheet. All right, so here is what our loan terms look at a glance. Chris will be paying off his house at 2035, and I'll be paying off my house in 2050. The difference is that Chris will be paying 251000 and I'll be paying 334000 and this is pretty alarming for most people, I would think. I only borrowed $200,000, but I ended up paying $334,000 in the end. But let me reveal these hidden columns, and it'll start making a little bit more sense. All right, so for this example, I wanted to make it super oversimplified. For the first 15 years of Chris's mortgage, he will not invest anything. And then once his house is paid off, he'll start investing aggressively into the stock market. The issue with this is he loses a lot of his money just because he started 15 years later. The beauty of compounding interest is that the more time you give it, the quicker it grows. So let me reveal what could have happened if he had decided to go with a 30-year mortgage and just invested the difference instead. All right, so I made this little snippet on the side. You can see here that Chris's 15-year mortgage is about $1,400 a month, whereas my 30-year mortgage is about $929 a month. The difference of that is $469, and if you spread that over out over a year, that's $5,629. Let's say that I decide to invest that difference into something like a Roth IRA. And if you don't know what a Roth IRA is, it's pretty much just a tax advantage retirement account that you can put your money into some sort of mutual fund or invest it in some sort of way. So let's say that I do that. And so the formula that I've got is just a basic compounding interest calculation. And so each year I plan to just contribute the 5629 per year. And this is how much it would look like at the end of my 30 years. So at the end of 30 years, my house will have been paid off and I will come out with $574,000 in my retirement account. And this is based off a 7% interest rate, which I think is pretty reasonable. And you could definitely do an entire topic about whether or not 7% is effective or not. But in this case, that's what I'm going to be assuming. All right, so you can see from this example that even though Chris decided to pay off his house faster and paid significantly less in interest, he lost out in all of this compounding interest. And at the end of the day, he is actually going to be about $106,000 short uh, compared to my 30-year mortgage, despite me paying almost $80,000 more in interest. So you can clearly see how important it is to use compounding interest and time to your advantage. Even when Chris finished paying off his mortgage and he invested into his retirement very aggressively at $17,000 a year, it still wasn't enough to 
break even with the 30 years of me contributing $5,600 a year. And even at this point, this is probably too much for a Roth IRA, which is a tax advantaged account, as I said before. So he would have to probably look at alternative avenues of how to invest his money, which would probably not be as tax advantaged for him. All right, so I know that was a super oversimplified example, but I hope that gives you an idea of like what a 30 year mortgage can give you and the advantages of it. At the end of the day, the nice thing about having a 30 year mortgage is that there's a little bit more flexibility just because you have a little bit more cash flow each month. In that example, I had an extra $500 a month and you can do a lot of things with $500 a month more than just investing it. It can be helpful for the sudden loss of a job or unexpected medical expenses. And another nice thing about having a 30 year mortgage is that if you decide that you want your 30 year mortgage to be a 15 year mortgage instead, you could just pay into the principal and have it paid off faster. The opposite is true for a 15 year mortgage. You could not turn that into a 30 year mortgage by just paying it slower or paying less each month, unless you refinance, which is another headache in and of itself. And the last advantage of having a 30 year mortgage is that you have less money tied up into the house. With less money tied up into the house, you can pursue more risks like starting a business, buying a second property, or even just investing into the stock market like I showed in that example. Of course, all of this isn't for everyone. Say for example, you do get a 30 year mortgage and instead of doing something reasonable with the extra money you get each month, you just decide to go on vacation or buy Gucci flip flops every month and you just spend that money, you're better off just doing a 15 year mortgage instead and forcing yourself to pay into that mortgage. All right, so that'll do it for me. I hope this video is helpful. Uh, it actually opened my eyes up a little bit, especially when the numbers are compared side to side. And I feel a little bit more confident about doing a 30 year mortgage. And I think that everyone else does a 30 year mortgage also. So hopefully you like this video. Hopefully it makes sense. If you have any questions, leave them down below in the comment section. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you like the content and want to see more house stuff in the future when I close in about a month, consider subscribing. Until next time, this is John, and thank you for watching.